Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 5-25-2022, and today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 109. Uh, I've got quite a bit to cover tonight, uh, so let's just get right to it. Um, basically, I'm done with the project, and I say basically because I got Step 6 and Sub A and Sub B done, but not quite the 7 yet. Um, <clears throat> I will preface it and say it's really just uh, troubleshooting how to... Uh, looks like I haven't gotten to it yet. But looks like it's how to publish your project to your GitHub pages using Webpack because you have to do a little bit of uh, finagling um, because of how it's set up. So I may or may not do an ending video on that. So, but for sure I'm gonna consider this the complete ending video for this this uh, this project series. So, with that said, let's go over number six. Um, and if I do end up seeing that number seven is worth a video, I'll go ahead and make one. But otherwise, uh, th consider this the last one. It says, next, set up your restaurant site to be used to use tab browsing to access the contact and menu pages. Look at the behavior of this student's solution for visual representation. Put the sub A, put the contents of each tab inside its own module. Each module will export a function that creates a div el element, adds to the appropriate content and styles to that element and then appends to the DOM. And sub B, write the tab switching logic inside of index.js. You should have event listeners for each tab that wipes out the current content and then runs the correct tab module to populate it again. And so I have completed that. Uh, I did use some of the student's solution uh, for visual representa representation of the buttons. Um, but as far as the logic, this is all my own. Um, again, my way may not be the best way, it's just my way and it's a way. So without further ado, let's hit the editor. So first we're going to start off uh, talking about the uh, index.html. Um, and the what I did here was, again, inspired by, the, uh, by that student link, is I added a header in here, um, a header tag, and then inside of the uh, header tag, I have an unordered list with three list items with a class of home, a class of menu, and a class of contact with home menu and contact representative. So those are going to be the tabs at the top of the page and they're going to reside inside the header. And then everything else is the same on the HTML. And I'll just show you real quick what that, what that, eh, we'll come back to it. I want to go over the, uh, the style sheet here because um, it's not too complicated so um, my body I, I don't recall if I went over this before so I'm just gonna breeze through this real quick so I did actually I did do some of it I have added to it a bunch but so last time we talked we had margin padding zeroed out on content I had I've since moved it up to body because uh, I was having a problem where my um, the top of my header had a little bit of a gap in it, and it's because it was at the bleeding edge of the content uh, div and not the body div. So I zeroed out the margin padding on body, and that expanded the viewport to 100% again. Um, and then I added dot .image. Uh, image target is mar margin pixels 25, um, so that uh, creates that 25 pixels around the, each image in my, in my uh, repo. Uh, or my assets uh, section that we'll see in a minute and um, so this is targeting three different um, three different selectors landing page copy menu copy and contact copy and all it's doing is just uh, doing what we had before with a it's a, basically it's the styling of the paragraph tags you have the white smoke the gill sands and I hear weight the italic font and then um, heading down, I created a target for that for the header uh, tag, and it receives a background color of RGB 136, 120, and 226, and a height of 50 pixels, and that creates the background color and the height of the header. I'll just show you that here uh, now momentarily. Uh, so that creates this right here. So it's 50 pixels high, and as you can see, that's all. Viewports the full width, and 
Then we have a UL. So the unordered list is uh, is uh, these guys right here, home menu and contact. <clears throat> and it is set at a flex display, justify content space around. And so what that does is creates the space around it equal and it's, it's, uh, it's responsive. So when you screen size it, it will remain um, with that space around. And it's list type style none. So w since these are ULs and these are lists inside of unordered list, if you remember unordered list are, have bullets. So I remove the bullets with that list style type. Margin and padding is zeroed out. Uh, centered the item inside of the grid item box and the height of 50 pixels is the height of the each of the uh, uh, buttons shall we call them they're not actually buttons but they're an order list but they're acting like buttons <clears throat> which is pretty cool we'll go over all that <clears throat> and then I have the li itself so each list item is also a flex a flex um, container its height is 40 pixels um, because I want to have it to kind of look like a tab kind of so I didn't need it to go the full 50 pixels it just looked bizarre when I had it filling the entire header so it's 40 align items center uh, again self-explanatory it's lining the item center and in, inside of the uh, container border radius 5 pixels 5 pixels 0 0 so this creates the the edges uh, the rounded edges around each button we'll call them buttons but each list item and that black is the border so you have border top, border right, border left, one pixel solid black, and cursor pointer. I googled this one. Uh, we've never covered this before. This is kind of a cool thing. So since these are not actual buttons, when you hover over it before, uh, it was just the mouse as the mouse cursor as usual. Um, and then uh, when I hover over it now, you see the mouse turns to uh, you know uh, a uh, finger style to click on. Um, and that's doing that's using this cursor pointer so it basically allows control over cursor appearances on an element and it turns it to that pointer button so that's pretty cool um, I had never knew that so um, even though it's not a button we're basically getting it to act like a button and it is clickable I'm not clicking on it now just because I'm not trying to get ahead of the flow of the of the uh, video here and that's the CSS so if we go back over here um, we're back over here. This is the index.js that we were working on before. So we have initial page load here. Uh, first, let's go to the imports. So I changed the imports around, actually. <clears throat> I moved away from what I had in the previous video because that was very limiting um, in the aspect that you're only allowed to have one import asterisk from module. Um, and so when you try to create another one, you get an error. Uh, so to get around that, I went back to the documentation and used this format instead. So you import and in curly brackets your, uh, you know, your your function, and then from, and then your location where it sits. So first one we already had, and then I added the second two: import menu, import contact from each uh, typo here, even though this should work. Um, we'll double check that, make sure that works. Um, but yeah, so uh, that should work there. So what it does is it comes down your initial page load. So it goes and loads that as last time. So we have this. Uh, nothing's changed here. Um, I believe we had this from last video. Yeah, we had the initial page load. So the only thing that I've done different uh, is uh, that's actually all remains the same. So I added the menu and the contacts. So let's go over here and let's go in order. So we import. Here's our export function for menu. It looks like a lot going on, but it's really just a lot of repetitiveness. I'll sh uh, blow it up here a bit. Um, this is uh, not doing anything super fancy. It's doing a lot of the same thing that initial load's doing, except this middle... Uh, the middle button which is menu which is what this calls it's uh, so this is the same we're doing the DOM for the headings the same uh, now we just have so we're doing a DOM for the uh, green bean casserole image and I'll show you this in the browser too so it makes more sense but I won't go over it in nitty-gritty detail I will the but I guess maybe for the first ones but then they all repeat themselves so 
we create the we create the element img tag and call it uh, green bean cast and then green bean cast uh, dot classless dot add as we talked about in the last video allows you to add a string class so there's the image getting set there and that that we need that for the CSS and we need the source dot src is the source so where it's located and what it's called and this is the screen reader the alt uh, for um, for blind people uh, visually impaired and then we're appending the child and then underneath it I have a p tag that matches it that goes underneath it and there's a text content you know uh, a little bit of copy nothing that important text content um, we'll see it in the browser uh, classless add menu copy and this is also is targeting the CSS we just went over so it's important to have that in there and again mac and cheese uh, here's one for mac and cheese a duplicate so here's the image for mac and cheese and then here's the DOM for the P tag for mac and cheese so if we go over to import to the export function for contact uh, it's uh, more of the same, um, except I'm just doing DOM manipulation for a phone image, and then a little uh, again another P element for the phone image, and I have an email image here. I know I'm really breezing over this uh, because it's a lot of repetition, and I went over this it, all this exact stuff in the last video, so I don't want to bore you guys and repeat all this stuff verbatim. So. And then here's the um, DOM for the email image, um, the P, or the P tag, excuse me, for the email image. And here's the DOM for the address image, um, for for a physical address. And then here's the P tag for the address image, which is the physical address. <clears throat> and that is that. A lot of typing. It wasn't. It's just a lot of busy work. Um, it's really good. I learned a lot through this project, but um, as you can see, it's just a lot of typing, <clears throat> a lot of copying, and pasting, a lot of renaming. Um, so you go over here, and now we need to do we need to create a tab switching module. So I, I created a I did it as a uh, self calling self executing um, uh, module within this index.js. So after we initially load the page, we're going to call we're going to create a variable called tab switch tab switching module and those kind of take on the anonymous function of uh, uh, and and go ahead and invoke that itself and inside of that's going to be the three event listeners so we have a home tab a menu tab and a contact tab so that's uh, querying the selector for home menu and contact which is uh, in the hard coded here home menu and contact in the HTML so it knows to get that and it's going to add the event listener and listen for the click and it's going to here it's going to click to, and it's going to load the initial page load import and then this one's going to do the menu import and this one's going to go to the contact import and that's basically it so what happens here um, in the logic how it logically flows so like when it when this initial page load happens when you first bring up the browser or the site you're going to you're going to land on this right here the initial page load and then at the very top each one of these is exactly the same at the top anyway so it's going to create a constant it's going to create content div uh, that takes the value of uh, document query selector pound content for the class and then it's going to immediately remove any existing dom children are present I was trying to make that over here the logic in the index.js tab because it kind of said that in a way in the requirements but I couldn't get it to work right because this is a self-executing anonymous function and so I couldn't get it to um, it was basically executing this right here immediately and I didn't want it to I wanted to do it after the click so that's why it's in the each of the module loads uh, exports because this content dot div dot replace children with two prints uh, this is a method that basically removes everything underneath content div so it leaves content div but it uh, but the met method it re replaces children and it just if you don't give it a argument it will just it will just remove it um, and it says replace a places all children of nodes with nodes while replacing strings and nodes with equivalent text nodes so since I didn't put an argument in there it's just going to remove it uh, I Google that one and it works pretty slick and it doesn't take up any extra processing or runtime engine uh, processing time because um, 
it's not uh par pardon me a headset's messed up here it's not um replay it's not calling the dom again it's just it's just removing the children via the replace method so um you could do it another way that you could do like a for each loop um but that's taking more processing overhead because it Every time you click, it's going to have to run the for each. It's going to loop through everyone, and then it's going to have to re-add them through when it comes down through the DOM here, and does all the appendage appending. So it didn't. It doesn't make a lot of sense um, to do it that way. So this to me made the most sense with the least amount of overhead. Um, you guys might have different, better solutions, and that's cool too. So that's what that's doing, and that's the same for all of them. Um, so you got that meant you got that line there you got the line of code there for that one and for menu and then for contact you have the same thing so so basically it creates the, it, it it binds the content div via the query selector and then immediately replaces it and if there's nothing there it doesn't give any error or anything it just doesn't do anything so if it hasn't doesn't have any existing dom in there it will just skip it well i mean it processes it but it doesn't do anything uh, probably over explain that a little bit but I figured that was kind of important since I didn't put it over here in index.js. So, um, so that's it. Um, let's see what it looks like in the browser. So if you hit, so when you first come to the site, this is this page loads, which is the the initial land initial load page. You hit home. It's going. You don't really see it doing, but you look right over here on the far right corner of my of my screen you'll see the uh, uh, toolbar kind of or the li um, the line the scroller kind of blink every now and then I'm clicking home and it's basically reloading this every time it's going so fast you can't see it but anyway that it's doing that so if you click uh, on menu this is gonna load the menu um, module so we have there's the green bean uh, casserole image and there is the mac and cheese image and then there is the uh, p tag uh, Dom text there and if you go back to home there you go you can see that it cleared uh, it cleared the Dom it, so it cleared menu and then it reloaded home and then same if you go to contact so you go to contact there it just it wiped out the Dom for home and loaded the contact uh, module which all as you can see all of them have the welcome to JB tech talk restaurant and lounge on them and then this one has the image for call us an email image, email us at fake <laughs> at fake dot com, and a uh, physical address with an image. Our address is at one two three four Fake Lane, Fake Town, Iowa. Blah blah blah. We look forward to seeing you. So it's a basic page, but um, I think the more important thing than just the basics of the page is learning how to work with Webpack and running your watch in the background like this and. Um, really uh, getting to know Webpack um, and how the imports and exports work. I, I've learned a ton. Pretty uh, pretty excited about it and pretty pumped. I have a pretty good understanding. I always have more to learn. But um, anyway, I think I think it covers everything. Like I said in the beginning um, when I started this video, uh, I'm going to consider this completed. So I'm going to um, do an upload or um, I'm going to uh, push my my git changes to github and you should do the same thing when you get done with this number six and then i'll look at number seven tomorrow or so and if it looks like it's something worthwhile for video i might put one out and just call it you know call it an amended video or something like that but i'm i'm kind of guessing i'm just gonna not do that but we'll see but anyway i'll consider this the uh finished product um because there really is no more coding to do this is just troubleshooting how to get it up on github pages so you can um, publish it, you know, down here in the solutions. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the journey along with me today and in this series. It was a bit of a longer one, but thanks, thanks for sticking it out with me. Um, and um, let me know in the comments section. Please like, share, and subscribe as usual, all the usual stuff. Uh, let me know in the comments section what you guys thought of this project. And... Um, about 61% of you are still not subscribed that watch these videos, so I would appreciate it if you find value in these videos that you uh, go ahead and give me a subscribe if you would and a like on the videos and comment in the and be active in the community. Um, I, I appreciate every one of you, and uh, with all that said, 
Until next time, see ya.